It is Sunday night. It's good to be talking baseball. We're going to talk fab. We're going to talk some news and notes. We're going to talk about uh, a number of offensive players who are off to really, really poor starts. All coming up next on the Roadwire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Happy Sunday evening, everybody. Welcome to the Roadwire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. I am Scott Jensta, joined as always on Sunday by Jeff Erickson. We are sponsored by Prize Picks. We uh, we uh, thank them for the sponsorship of the podcast uh, very much. There, Jeff. Uh, it's uh, it's been another week of uh, injuries and crazy stuff in baseball. How is everything uh, in your baseball world there? Pretty good, pretty good. I mean, I've got some leagues that are requiring more work than others, as is the case usually, but. Uh... You know, I'm having a lot of fun. L.A. De La Cruz is good this week, so it's fun watching that. Our Reds had a great weekend after a terrible start to the week. Uh, I'm in a good mood. That is that is good. You guys are you guys are. Uh, I, I, I I watch your team in the main event. You guys are hanging in there uh, really nicely. Good place to uh, kind of be in uh, after uh, you know what is this three and a half weeks or so. Right. Uh, my team's less so. There's been a really rough start. I am uh, I'm enjoying it less than you are at the so far. Uh, yeah, I haven't, uh, haven't had this many, this is a bad start in quite a while. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be digging out of some holes here, but, uh, I'm looking forward to the challenge a little bit, uh, while wishing I didn't have to uh, partake in it. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you on that, Scott. Um, I, it, it's no fun being part of the 700 club or 800 club now. Uh, not, as uh I'm not quite there, but I'm not, no. I'm not far away from it at the moment. No, that's just, uh, as was more self, self-referential yeah. there. Self-deferential even, um, as the case may be, uh, no, I, I yeah, you've got some struggles, but you're also you're a veteran of this process. You know how yeah. things can change in a hurry. Your players start doing what they're supposed to be doing. It's OK. And I know you've got some uh, it's mostly on the pitching side where you need to do a little bit of work. And that's the thing that can kind of turn things around pretty quickly, too. Yeah, it can. And I think I think the the point of uh, a lot of my players need to do what they're supposed to do is, is pretty big, although I had some injuries. But most of it's just been poor performance. But uh, you know, again, it's April twenty first. Like it's going to look a lot different in a couple months. But my uh, my Vegas main event league is really really active in Fab, so it's been a tough struggle there. Like guys that I'm getting in other leagues, right. I'm not even close to getting. So as we get into Fab, we'll talk about that. But it's interesting how you know a league like that, my league's really active, can really uh, can really impact a lot. But before we get into Fab, Jeff, baseball is wild. There are two like historically bad teams right now. Um, yeah, there are. Colorado's awful. They're five and seventeen, but they are still better than the White Sox, who are three and eighteen right now. Have lost uh, three in a row. They give it up. Uh, they've scored forty five runs in twenty one games. Been shut out seven times. I think the stat was the only team is since uh, that since stats started in nineteen oh one. This has seven shutouts in the first twenty games of the season. Uh, I know they had uh, they had like three of their main hitters hurt, but man, the Rockies are really bad. But the White Sox are just horrid. Yeah, and let's not forget special love for the Marlins here too. I mean, they're they're right. They've entered the they got to enter the chat here as well. You're right. They have one more win than the Rockies do. You're right. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and and their run differentials in that same zone as well, which is is pretty crazy. Uh, Rockies did win the first game of this doubleheader and a pretty bizarre finish to the game. I don't know if you saw the ninth inning slash extra innings. Uh, I saw game. the uh, fan reaching over and they ruled right. an out rather than a home run, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Um, it, it, not a ground rule double, not a, but not a homer, but an out. Um, I saw a so. quick clip of it. Was it the right call? I think it was definitely fan interference. I don't think the ball would have gone out. I, okay. it's, it's And I guess there's not much leeway between like either it's an out or it's it's a homer. There was I don't think they right. could have ruled it a ground rule double because it's not like uh, it, because it clearly interfered with the fielder uh, is the way I, I saw that there. That was my interpretation of it. Other people might choose to differ on that one there, but yeah, it, it was, it was definitely interference. It, it was weird seeing it go to straight to the out. And then the Mariners score a run. Yeah. Andres Munoz comes in and he blows the save with a little help from the defense on the go ahead run. But, um, Munoz who doesn't even get that many save chances blew that one. Yeah, obviously started with the ghost run on first, but he gave three hits in the inning. So I mean, he did a lot of a lot of damage himself there too. Yeah. Um. <laughs> sorry, I'm just looking at the quote from uh, the comment in the chat from PJ there. Uh, he goes, "My Marlins not in this conversation." Pr- praise Jesus. Then, damn it, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and of course the of course the Mariners scored ten runs in the second game. George Kirby throws five shot innings in the first game, and they uh, the, the Mariners right. get poor George Kirby. Yeah. I was just like, you gotta be kidding me. I it was uh 
it was interesting that they took him out though. He had 88 pitches after five, I guess, uh, you know, throwing in cores, maybe that was enough. I thought he'd go one more inning, but uh, we, we've had the conversation about Kirby's pitch count before in the past. So yeah, uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. By the way, siege is right. By the way, the Rockies deserve the out because the, yeah. the fan was stupid. It's your home team. Yeah. Yeah. You know, if don't reach for the ball over the fence, it's a chance to win the game. You cost your team. I think fans, fans with a chance for a ball, maybe care more about than they do their team. I'm afraid it is the Rockies, and we know what the Rockies do. Um, I don't, I don't even have to finish that sentence. Everybody knows it by now. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, it's they're they're ter- they, you know they're not trying to win, so why should the fans care about costing one? I guess that's what. The- yeah, that is the theory there. But uh, interesting enough, you mentioned some bad teams. Um, right above that, um, the last place team in the AL West, uh, the Houston Astros are seven and sixteen right now. So I think it, you know, I think we knew the White Sox were bad. We knew the Rockies are going to be bad. And the Marlins, maybe we thought were going to be decent. We knew the A's are going to be bad. There's some bad teams in there. The uh, both West divisions are kind of a mess. The the best team in the, in, the, in either West division is thirteen eleven. That's the Dodgers, who mm-hmm. did not have a very good week. They've lost uh, you know seven of the last ten, but. Houston at seven sixteen uh, is is one that we did not expect. And those had some injuries in, in the pitching staff. Valdez has been out. Uh, Justin Verlander just came back this week. But uh, seven sixteen for Houston is uh, that's a rough start. It's horrible, and yeah. you know, especially and it's their pitching has been pretty awful too. Given I mean, up uh, the, the most, okay. they've given up the most runs in the American League. Yeah, uh, is that that's bad. I hear, and uh, only uh, only fewer runs than the uh, aforementioned Rockies. Right. Uh, and, and if you go by FIP, they're 24th in baseball. So it's not like this is a fluke either. They're not getting babbipped or anything like that. They're, they're, uh, Hunter, 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 Hunter Brown would disagree with not getting babbipped, but other than well, that. yeah, but he, <laughs> not, not always, not all of that no. is babbipped though. No, uh, they have the third lowest strikeout rate per nine innings in the league, uh, at 7.775. So they're, they're not missing bets. You know what happened? You know, you know how you get babbipped? By putting a lot of balls in contact to be in, in play there in the first place there. That's now, fair. I know you should use K percentage, not K per nine, but I was on the page I was on on Fangraphs. So if you want to look at it from that standpoint there, Houston's 19, it's second worst in the league if you go by percentage. So it's even worse at 19.4%. Only the Rockies, who are a metric ton away from that, uh, at 17% are worse. Um, it, it's it's a really bad strike. Right? I mean, you can tell they need Verlander back. They need McCullers back. They need a miracle. They need J.R. Richard back. They need Mike Scott back. Uh, and, and then maybe they might have a good starting pitching staff. Mike Scott and his sandpaper. Yes, absolutely. Not bitter. We're going to talk. Uh, we're going to talk uh, uh, hitters who are struggling later. But uh, one guy's not in the list, but I just, just looked into him. Jose Abreu looks absolutely fried. I, you look at everything. There's his slugging is 085 right now. That is crazy. He has one RBI hitting kind of in the middle of a Houston lineup. He's uh, it's 65 plate appearances, no home runs, uh, no barrels. This is a wild. I know he was, he was bad to start last year. He's bad to end 2022. He kind of turned it on last year. Uh, he's been utterly awful. When we drafted Jose Abreu in the main event in the 21st round, the, the logic was, well, he's hitting in the middle of a good yeah. lineup. He, there's no, at least he won't be as bad as he was at the start of last year. Yeah. Chokes on us. <laughs> Uh, we cut him. Have this you? Week. I was gonna say, have you held or is it, is it finally? We cut him finally this week. We benched him this past week. And we cut him today. Uh, he was available in my main event to get dropped last week, and I did not bid on him. So that uh, I'll tell, tell you whether or not I agree with your drop there. It's uh, yeah. If he just looks, I mean, nothing looks good. He's striking out more than he ever has in his career by like five percent. It's like a twenty six percent strike rate. Not walking at all. Um, swing strike rates way up. It just looks. He looks like age caught up in some ways. Thirty seven. I mean, it's not. It happens. He's had stretches like this in the past, but um, yeah, you took him at 21st round. You're like, oh, well, you know, there's 80, 85 RBIs at least. That's that's pretty solid in this round, but uh, yeah, one mm-hmm. so far. Confidently come back after the break. I walk up to the table. Jose Abreu, because I, I I think I went to the restroom right that's before. Right. Yeah, f- yeah, your first your first pick after the break, too. Yeah, um, yeah. We're, we we plotted this one out. Yes. Um, fortunately, other picks worked out better, but uh, yeah, that, that one was a wasted pick. Could have had, well, the next two picks were Jeff McNeil and Chris Bryant, so that wasn't very good. Uh, Jake Cronenworth, eh, it was a pretty bad round here. As now I look yeah, at, at least, Ronnie I mean, uh, <laughs> if you're going to have a pick not work out, the 21st round is an okay spot for that to be. Yeah, I guess Brian De La Cruz was maybe the best pick of the round that I'm seeing hitter-wise so far. Uh, yeah, Bryce Terang at the very last pick of the round. Um, Team Forsland uh, had a nice pick there. Bryce Terang. That would yeah. have been useful to have. A lot of steals there. The interesting part of it, the Astros, though, is just how awful 
the bullpen's been. Um, Josh Hader's whip is 166. He got an 83 DRA. Ryan Presley's whip is over two so far. Like they just the back of that mm-hmm. bullpen and Brian Abreu, who was awesome last year, uh, 1.8 whip. Like these guys are putting two guys on base every single inning. It's that's hard, hard to live that way. It is. It is. And I think I've, I think they've really only blown like one lead. It's just a lot of times like haters pitching in non leverage situations because they they just don't get leads, uh, which is weird to say too. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's been every time I see him pitch, I just see he looks a little bit off. He gave up. Uh, he had four runs against the Braves earlier in the week, and he gave up, uh, you know, two hits and a run against the Nationals on Friday. He did get this? I think he had yeah. the save in that game. He did get the second save in that game. But uh, yeah, he's looked a little bit off. But Presley and Abreu, like you just expect those guys to, you know, dominate the seventh inning. It has not happened at all. Yeah, it hasn't. Um, you know, Montero still not very good. Um, it's it's a rough look. Uh, Dusty got out at the right time, apparently. He might have. It's uh, you know, luckily for them, nobody in the AL West is playing well, so they're just they're still kind of right in it. They're five games out, no big deal in April. But uh, looking up to the uh, the other divisions here, just real quick before we get into some fancy stuff, uh, the Cleveland Guardians, uh, best run differential in baseball, first team to fifteen wins. They won again today. They have sixteen. They swept the A's this weekend, sixteen and six. Um, one hundred twenty four runs scored is the uh, the most in the American League. Uh, only second to, I think the Braves have one more run in the National League. Um, they've only given up 72 runs. Like the, it, the I can't, I won't come the wrong name. The Guardians have been playing really, really well. Uh, do you believe in this team at the moment? I believe they exist. Um, I believe, <laughs> believe they that exist they take in the, the uh, in the good uh, good team realm. No, not yet. Uh, I think they've had a very friendly schedule. Uh, they they caught the Red Sox exactly the right time for Fen- that Fenway series. They fa- played the A's twice, the Mariners on the road, the Angels, I think, on the road. Uh, the one series they had trouble was against the Yankees. Um, I, I'm i not there yet, uh, and I'm not there yet on the hitting. I, I think Josh Naylor is legitimately is, good. I'm uh, I'm not there on the pitching, so that's interesting. Well, uh, I'm not there on the pitching either, uh, oh, okay. especially as currently constructed. When they get Gavin Williams back, I'll buy him a little bit more. But um, like I, I wasn't in too avidly on the bidding for uh, the two spots that were open in their rotation. You know, Carrasco and Lively. I really wasn't in on those guys that much. I think they were like waterfall bids at best. Um, I did pick doing, up Tyler uh, Freeman though. He's uh, yeah, I picked him up too. He was really bad. And I dropped him, and then he was really good again this week. Yeah. So we probably will get whipsawed by that. But uh, when, uh, again, when I was cutting Jose Abreu. So. Why not? We're doing uh, we're doing real. preseason pods next year. If you bring me back, um, remind me that when I'm talking about players, I like just to draft them rather than trying to be too fancy. Because I was between Josh Naylor and Yandy Diaz in my main event, mm. and I just needed a little bit of batting average. And I figured, you know, I got to take the I got to take the better batting average guy here. I'm just going to take Yandy Diaz and lock that in. And boy, has that been a gigantic fail so far? Because Naylor is crushing Yandy Diaz so far. Jo- yeah, he is, but Yandy Diaz isn't going to be bad. You're you're not gonna you're gonna probably regret it, but not as much as you are right now. Does that I make think sense? that's I think that's fair. I don't think Yandy any chance he yeah. hits two thirty or whatever he's hitting now, but um I just think Josh Nando is really, really good. Yeah. Twenty uh, RBI, six home runs. It's uh it's a it's a really nice start for him. Yeah. I'm loving some of the comments here. Uh yeah, and Yandy is getting babbipped. So you, you can I think you'll be fine on that it's one. It's just there. one of those guys that every time I'm you know, I usually like the Rays start their games at four Pacific time. I don't look for an hour. It's just, I feel like he's, he starts every game over two. It's wild. Three forty Pacific time. A lot of the times too. They're yeah, one of those true. early starters. Now, you know, uh, they yes. are Cleveland are, is uh, who else starts their games early. The Nats, I think do it's, it's a, my reds, our reds, everybody's reds uh, do do so as well. Uh, hey, when you, when you throw, when you throw a home run and three stolen bases in the same game, you get to be, is everybody's reds right now. Yeah, that's true. Ellie is uh, Ellie is fun for sure, but uh, let's hit a few news and notes before we do get into uh, Fab and talking to struggling players. Uh, there were a lot of big injuries again this weekend. I feel like for a couple of days we kind of avoiding them, and all of a sudden on Friday and Saturday they just they they came they came pretty poorly. Um, the big one was uh, Francisco Alvarez, big one because it was his long term. Uh, he has a uh, he's having he had had having th- thumb surgery uh, for a torn ligament in his thumb. It sounds like he according to his words we'll be back six to eight weeks um so like everybody's kind of going with that time frame uh really tough one because getting catchers especially in a 15 teamer where you start two catchers i mean you're just getting the guys i was picking up are are brutal uh, my question for you is would you have uh would you have held or dropped francisco alvarez because i had a uh, i had a really difficult time with that one 
Yeah. As always, the wishy-washy answer, which is the accurate answer, is it kind of yeah. depends uh, yeah. on and the couple the things that it depends on are do, are you stashing anybody else? For instance, uh, if you are, uh, then it's more likely that you're going to cut them. Uh, obviously, in a one catcher league, it's a cut. Uh, in a two catcher league, it's yeah. hard to find a catcher, but it's also hard to hold a guy for eight weeks if you don't have IL spots. So no IL spots and you have one or two other injury or and or like Paul Skeens type of players, then yeah. you cut them or you have to cut Skeens, which you're never you're not going to do. Can't they just call him up by now? I mean, just it's ridiculous. Let's call him up. Um, I uh, I went back and forth about 12 times and I cut Alvarez. You did. Um, was not uh, one of those things. I'm waiting two months on a guy with a thumb injury who's a catcher. I means I'm carrying a third catcher for two months because I wasn't. I mean, I could take a zero for a week or two. I, mean, I wasn't taking a zero for two months, so I had to pick up a catcher. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just looked at depth, and it was you know it was dropping. It was dropping him, or it was dropping someone that you know was my backup third baseman or my seventh outfielder. And I just felt the way my team's going right now, not going very well. I needed the depth. Um, if I was doing really well, maybe that would have uh, affected it. Maybe I would have thought I can afford this, but I dropped him. My other thought on it was he wasn't really doing anything yet. I know that. Uh, so you're, you're holding a catcher for two months that maybe when he comes back, we don't know he's gonna be that good. We don't know how much the right. thumb injury is going to affect him. It's not like you're dropping JT real or Adley Rutschman. It was someone that I really liked. Obviously I drafted him, but you know, hit 209 last year. There are some, uh, there are some, you know, some negatives here. Uh, hard hit rate was down a little bit. Barrel is down. So he wasn't doing a ton. Um, I'm probably just justifying and talk myself into it, but uh, two months with the thought that I don't know what I'm getting when I get back. I don't know what I'm getting with a thumb injury. I decided to uh, drop him and keep the roster spot. Um, if he has 20 home runs in the second half, I'll be pretty sick about it. What other options were available? I mean, what op- catcher options were available to you when you were, you were dropping Alvarez? Um, I picked up Riley Adams in Washington. Unfortunately, I had really nothing uh, available. I'm looking at my sheet here. My other main event, there were like two or three good options. Mm-hmm. I was between Riley Adams, Gary Sanchez, and Christian Vasquez and Jake Rogers. So bad and bad and bad and bad. Yeah, Adams is. I think Adams can hit. It's just he's clearly number two. That's that's the only problem yeah. there. Yeah, Kiba Ruiz is out right now. But yeah, once right. he comes back. Yeah, I mean long term. Yeah, you're right. But yeah. yeah so- thought- my thought was literally playing it week by week, and I'm just going to, I'm not married to any of these guys. If Ruiz comes back and Adams goes back to the way it was, I'll just pick up someone else. But uh, I just thought for me, uh, using that roster spot, kind of rotating catchers rather than holding a third one made more sense. Um, with the, uh, and I admit that it was a really tough call. And if Alvarez is uh, really good in the second half, that one will hurt. I can always get him back, but I imagine someone will grab him before I do. I imagine I could pick up next week, would be my guess. Yeah. Fortunately, I think I don't have him anywhere. Uh, I checked and double checked, didn't see him on any of my rosters. So I didn't have to make that tough decision. But I'm also the guy that's holding Luis Robert in a couple of leagues. So I don't know. It's a tough call. I am holding Luis Robert where I had him in a 15 team or two. I just think that when he comes back, I feel much better about him being really, really good and a, a big ceiling sure. than I do about Alvarez. So, but uh, it was a tough call. I went back and forth a number of times. I could actually see the, the point for both sides. Actually, it's funny. There was, uh, Probably guys that I would consider, you know, really, really elite NFPC players, you know, top players. Uh, one, the one, one that had as an easy drop, and one has a definite hold. So there, there was, there was the range of like uh, people were completely on different sides of it. Yeah, for sure, I understand completely on that one. Tristan uh, Cases in Boston um, went on the IL on yesterday. I think they announced it with a rib cage strain. Uh, when he first swung, I just assumed it was oblique. I think I, everybody grabs their side now. I just think oblique right away. But it was a rib cage strain. Um, there have not been a timetable on him. So obviously you're holding cases for now. But Cassis, I always say it wrong. Um, I think it is Cassis. But... I think it is Cassis. Yeah, I think I messed it up the first time. But um, someone that uh, was also tough to replace. Corner is weirdly tough to find in 15 teamers. I've been looking for corners for a while here. Uh, there were a few names out there. But uh, that, that's one that's tough, uh, tough to lose. He had not done... A ton so far. I just have six home runs. But he's only hitting 244, but uh, a, t- a tough one to lose there for sure. Yeah, uh, and I, I didn't like some of the dialogue here either. Uh, Alex Cora was asked if he was concerned about a lengthy absence, and he said he responded yes. Yep. Uh, it's not it's not right up there with we hope he plays again this year or he'll be back. I, I, I always love that one half or yeah. something like that, but it's not great. Uh, not great at all. Uh, Unfortunately, Bobby Dahlbeck is not their solution to this one here. He's not a, I, whatever the question is, Bobby Dahlbeck is not the answer. Certainly not this year. Boy, he he's on the like he he. They're building a bus depot. He's not just on the struggle bus. They're bus. <laughs> he's on the struggle bus depot. He's so bad. He, um, may, uh, he may never be uh, never be back to what we thought he was going to be at one point. I think, no, it's, I think that ship that has happens. probably sailed. It does. 
A um, couple of pitchers, uh, I guess like th- three pitchers, but the first coach, Trick, Christian Javier and Merrill Kelly, were both supposed to pitch today. They're both scratched today. Uh, both went on the IL. Uh, Christian Javier with some neck discomfort. Merrill Kelly had an MRI in his shoulder, so that one is a little uh, more concerning there. Javier's actually pretty, pitching pretty well. That was a tough one there, but neck discomfort, um, I'd probably take that over the shoulder every single day, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, yeah, un- unfortunate about that. Did Kelly go on the IL? I didn't see that. Oh, did they not actually put him on yet? No. Um, you they, could be right. I think they Sorry still hope it won't be necessary. And in fact, I think they caused called it a pause or something like that. Uh, and, but it might have it might have come across Twitter. But I no, I think you're, I think you're right. They said they hope a trip is not necessary. So my apologies there. But uh, I don't hit an MRI on his shoulder. I can't imagine they don't put him on there at some point. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm with you on that one there. Um, Especially when he's called your, it a breather. That was the word I was looking a for. Breather, great, yeah, because that always it's like works that great. airplane joke. A little breather, and it's her Villachev and all that. But, oh. uh, yeah, thirty-five year old pitcher with his right shoulder. I'm not buying that, but uh, you are right. But a scratch today. Obviously, you can't use him next week. Um, but hopefully that uh, that does not linger too long. Um, Frankie Montas by our, our for our Reds was hit by a comebacker in the forearm. Sound like yeah. he was just bruised though. Like the X-rays were negative, likely to miss his next start. But it didn't sound like it was a long term issue. Do you you heard the same thing on him? Yeah, I heard that it's an issue of swelling needing to go yeah. down, and the fact yeah. that they were able to declare that from about that from now today that he will likely miss the next start is kind of bothersome. The good news for the Reds at least is that they have Nick Martinez who just pitched the day before and th- pitched three innings. So he's still kind of stretched out. He can go five probably, you know, and, you know, and it'll be his turn basically too. So they got through today. They still shut out the angels today, which is a remarkable thing when Montas only got them two outs. Uh, it is the angels though. It is. Although Taylor Ward's been good. Trout's been good. Uh, Taylor, Ward, it, Taylor Ward's been awesome. Taylor Ward's been huge. I, my team that's struggling, Taylor Ward's pretty much been keeping it aloft. If I didn't have him, I'd be, I don't know where I'd be. Yeah. Uh, Chu and I have him as well. And uh, that was that. Was that Brent Suter with the bulk of innings today? Is that who I saw it was? Uh, he was the, the guy that came in next. Yes. Uh, I don't Through know. Like, like three or four innings, though, right? Yeah. And well, which is, that's what he does. That's what he does. Yeah. That's what he did that, in Milwaukee, too. That was, was a sneaky that. good acquisition because Suter actually pitched well in Colorado last year. Uh, yeah. And Suter went three and a third. You're right. There you uh, go. Didn't, didn't miss that many bats, only two strikeouts, but he did what he was supposed to. Pagan gave them two. You know, the guy you want to watch out for, yes. by the way. Yes. Fernando Fer- Cruz. Fernando Cruz. Fifth hole Nasty. of the year today. Check out the dude's strikeout rate when you get a chance. He is missing tons of bats. It, it's it's pretty right now. 18 to 5K to walk in nine innings. Uh, is he have he, a, is he a th- change up? Is that what he throws that's really nasty? I think it's a splitter, actually. It's a splitter, is. okay. And I just know every time I see every time I see a gif on him on Twitter, it's something nasty. Yeah. Uh he it's a great story, too. He he made his major league debut at age 32. You know, he he's someone that you know oh, that's cool. Bounced around a lot of places, played overseas for a while, persevered, persevered, finally made it. Now he's doing well. It's it's really kind of cool to see. Question in the chat from our friend Kevin Hastings, who uh, won the TGFBI overall a couple of years ago. Would you uh, do you always have a, you know, with guys being scratched on the day they pitched, you always have a backup for for Mondays? I always have two. I, I try to have like 11 pitchers that I'm comfortable throwing that week. I never go with nine. Never. Sometimes you have 10. You have some bad matchups for guys in the aisle, but I try to have 11. Um, is my, usually my goal is to have a couple of backs, but I always have an option where if someone gets scratched, something happens. I always have a, a tenth pitcher to throw on Mondays. Doesn't have to be a starting pitcher. Uh, no, I think that's, that's one takeaway. Um, yeah. Is it can be Fernando Cruz, for yeah. instance. But you always want a ten and eleventh, a tenth at least, and hopefully eleventh arm to put in there because there are just so many pitchers that um, between now and tomorrow game starts, or even the guys that start on Tuesday, just so much can change, especially with pitchers. Yeah, a hundred percent, hundred percent agree with that. Um, by the way, since we're talking about the, our Reds a little bit, yes. uh, can we mention the Cardinals right now? <laughs> Please do. My uh, my uh, my neighbor's a Cardinals fan, and I see him walking the dog every morning, and all he does is complain, so it must be going pretty badly for them. I was going to say, is his head down? Is he very sad? Uh, he is very sad. Um, hates uh, hates Marmol and hates, is it Mazoliak? Is that his yeah. name? Especially when you see yeah, Tyler right. O'Neill go nuts after getting a change of scenery trade, and then, of course, he got hurt, but still. It's a classic Cardinals thing there. Marmol just dragging his players in the public and all that like that last year. They've scored 76 runs in 22 Ooh. games. They haven't. I think they've gone eight games now without a homer, which is just insane when you think about it. Since Lars Newbar, Newbar hit a homer. Um, 
yeah, it's it's a bad it's a, it's a, they're in a bad way right now. And I, I thought this was a team that was probably the best in the division. I fooled myself again into thinking that. Believe me, um, the Cardinals. Sonny Gray now. was Sonny Gray was an ideal acquisition, and he dealt today and got nothing like it. Cardinals had like the bases loaded. I think nobody out in the first inning and didn't score it. And Blake Cardinals. Perkins robbed Newt Bar over the fence of a three-run homer. I think too. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And it's only Newpar that can even hit it that far in the first place. They sent down Victor Scott. That experience did not go well. Um, yeah. It, it tough probably, times. Probably, probably about a week too long. They really tried to talk themselves into him staying in his defense a lot, but it was, uh, he needed to get out of there. He needs to go get some at bats. And I mean, he, they pushed it pretty quick. I think he only played in double A, right? He's not playing. He skipped triple A totally. Uh, I think you're correct on that one there. Yeah, I think he was double A last year. I mean, it was worth a shot, but I think that, uh, yeah, he only played double A. He played single A, obviously, too, but he only he did not, uh, not play triple A this year. He probably needs, uh, needs a month of triple A to get the swing down, then maybe come back up. Yeah. And a lot of players struggle in their first taste of the major. So, for sure. Uh, I mean, just look, you know, you can, you can look at like, uh, Colton Kowser, you can look at Jordan Westberg as, as two very good now examples. You can look at Mike Trout and Alex Rodriguez, like, stud. Yeah. Struggled their first times up. Yeah, look at how many times A Rod got sent down before he yeah. finally connect clicked. Um, it was always they always had that like ten step process in the uh, in the forecaster about the Alex Rodriguez uh, getting mm-hmm. sent down and back up and struggling and back up and then all of a sudden winning winning MVPs and stuff really really quickly. Yeah, exactly. Couple other quick notes, real quick, so we can uh, we can get to Fab uh, Anthony Rendon won the IL. Uh, bye, Anthony. We don't want to talk about you anymore. That's uh, fine. Here, <laughs> uh, Rafael Devers has been really frustrating, really bad, and then missing games at the shoulder. Then the uh, then the I guess it was a hamstring that turned into a knee. Um, he missed the weekend. Could return on Tuesday. Sounds like he and Tyler Leon both might play on Tuesdays. The hope tough because they don't play Monday. So if you uh, if you want to use them. You need somebody else that uh, doesn't play Monday, also, so you can slide in there if you need to need to adapt real quick. Correct. Uh, that hits hits you in the in the main. It hits me in my AL home league Amiki, the one that started Rotowire. Um, I'm I'm awful in that league right now, and part of that is Devers, who I I ha- didn't get anywhere else, but I I like the price I got him in that league. Um, I think I texted you when it happened. I have O'Neill and Devers on the same main event team, and they ran into geez. each other. Like, what are we? What are we doing? Yeah, brutal. Just brutal. You always get you always get like the oh my god you got a collision, but getting a collision with the same, maybe I should just draft thirty guys on thirty different teams that solve that problem. Yep, put them on the IL, let them fully heal both the shoulder and the knee. Um, that's the way I'd wish for it to happen. And then I have the certainty of knowing that he's not going to play, except he's supposed to come back on Tuesday instead. So. Yeah, he is. So we'll see there. Uh, a couple of guys starting uh, starting the rehab assignment. Some good news here. Uh, Yoan Duran starting rehab assignment on Tuesday. So not too far away from him uh, closing for the Twins. Uh, Brian Wu pitched really well today in his uh, his first rehab outing. So he's uh, he's making progress. Uh, probably a couple more of those till you can uh, throw him in your lineup. And Max Scherzer making his first rehab on start on Wednesday. So we do have some pitchers. Um, Hopefully making their way back. Obviously, hope for no setbacks here, but uh, maybe some uh, maybe some guys to uh, come to come save the save the troops at the moment. Yeah, uh, that's right. And Rangers are about to be really crowded. Uh, well, oh, they they solved one of the. You know, we spent a lot of time on Sirius XM this week, just you know, figuring out how much are we going to be bidding on Jack Lighter, and then he got crushed by the Tigers and got sent back down. So yeah. that did that you, solves uh, one. Did of you it. think about bidding him and holding him since he was available now? Yeah, not really. Yeah, I, mean, I, I kind of uh, every I time I'm about like, it. I did too, and then I'm like, yeah, I don't, I can't do it. I didn't even bring it up with my uh, with Shu uh, in, in the process of our bidding. Instead, we got a guy that subsequently got sent down. So we're we're awesome because uh, we got we ended up getting vines. Uh, so uh, that was a fail. Oh uh, yeah, he. Uh, um, I'm just looking here. He got added for Jack Lair got added for twenty five dollars in my Vegas main event. So someone was uh, someone was in on that for a decent price, and then he did not get added in my other one. So one for two there. But uh, I'm when, uh, there's a yeah, mind, yeah. Zach uh, Zach Waxman does a, a, a fab recap on every Sunday night. That's really good. That uh, he writes a whole document on it. So I'll, I'll check that out. But he'll, I'm sure he'll have those uh, those st- that stuff in there too. Who who thought at the beginning of the week there'd be more Mark Lighter ads than there yeah. would be Jack Lighter ads? That's pretty funny. I uh, that what there were, we were talking Cubs closer in a second, but there were definitely more Mark Leiter than uh, than Jack Leiter. Um, let's get in. Let's get into Fab. But first, to know from our sponsors at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best way to get action on sports in more than thirty states across the country. Prize Picks is really simple to play. I can make my picks and submit my entry in less than sixty seconds. 
You just pick more or less on two more player stats and watch the winnings roll in. Jeff, I took a look at this. I looked at tomorrow's games. Uh, Miles McBride is my pick. Over eight points for the Knicks. I really like. Uh, I really like McBride. I think he's a he's a fun player. Uh, fun player for the Knicks. So that's uh, that's my pick there for uh, for Pisers. He had the twenty four points in game one. His over under is uh, eight. So I'm, I'm all in on that. Yeah. Uh, quick. The the site has uh, Pisers sites quick quick withdrawals. Easy game plan. Enormous selection of players and stat types are what prize makes Prize Picks the number one daily fantasy sports app. Download the app today and use code ROTOPOD for a first deposit match up to $100. That's promo, promo card R-O-T-O-P-O-D for a first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Uh, so, Jeff, let's start uh, start with offense and fab. I thought uh, there was a lot of interesting names in offense this week. Uh, not as many in pitching, but uh, had some interesting names. Uh, first, first one at the top was uh, with the Dodgers here in L.A. Uh, Andy Pajes got called up, uh, power-hitting mm-hmm. corner outfielder. Four of the Dodgers been playing uh, every day. Hit his first home run today. They finally uh, kind of uh, exploded. They had uh, ten runs on the Mets. Um, I missed on pause. I got outbid. I was uh, thought I had some pretty competitive bids in kind of the kind of the eighties and nineties range. He went more than that in my leagues. Uh, how do you feel about pause moving forward, both in terms of talent, playing time, and what'd you do with him this week? Uh, got outbid in the main. He went for one hundred and four. I think we're around the fifties or so, but we're, again, we're, we're trying to focus more of our resources on pitching. Anyhow, yeah. uh, we were lucky to have that luxury despite having to cut Jose Abreu today, but I did get the Pajas in yogurt and I calibrated for my, for my league appropriately. I got them for 23 bucks in yogurt. So very that's, happy. Uh, about that's that. really funny. Cause I, uh, I also calibrated, but I did not get him. I don't think, I think he went for 50 a month. Yeah. Uh, so happy, happy to, happy to welcome him there. That's the only place I got. I, I got Pajas, I think I'm trying I did to calibrate in, uh, in the online championship, the 12 teamer. I got him for 26 there. So I calibrated down. Uh, I'm trying to start to figure that out. Weird. They you are know. weird. He could go for 220 or like seven. Yeah. Like I, I spent $200 on a player in uh, one of my 12 teamers. Uh, you will never, and you won't be able to guess who it, the answer may shock you. Uh, but, uh, I'm actually really curious now. Was someone really good dropped in your league? Yeah. I so well, someone that can be really good, someone who's always injured but is not injured now. That is your kind. Pitcher or hitter? Hitter. Huh. Byron Surpri- Buxton? Surprise return from the IL this, this past week. I am totally lost. Who is it? I can't Eloy. Think. Oh, Eloy. Oh. He was kind of a surprise, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah. how much did he go for? Oh, what he went for, I'm kind of embarrassed to say, because that was me. And I bid 213, thinking uh, was, he's... Was, was there a backup? 29. All right. Was there a backup? So you're saying that I was I was dumb for bidding that much. Uh, I probably wouldn't be that much, but I definitely would have been in, and it probably would have been a lot more than 29. I mean, I think that... Yeah. Uh, okay. In a 12, I mean, you know, he's, he's Eloy in a 12 team or he's not huge, but yeah, if he plays every day, like I think that, uh, I mean, I, I kept him in the main event, so I didn't drop him. Um, yeah. Homer today. Um, you know, it's I'd say good. hitting in the middle of the White Sox lineup is a good thing, but we know it's not a good thing. It doesn't take a lot to do that, but uh, yeah, probably a little aggressive, but I definitely would have been in on the day for sure. I would have, I would have won him in your league for more than 29. That's for sure. Yeah. That was my mistake. I mean, it is a White Sox team context there, but he might get traded. In yeah. fact, I'd say the odds are pretty good that he gets dealt if he can stay healthy. Big, if, big work a, if there. Doing a lot of work. In a, in a 12 team where you can always find some guys. I, I worry less about a, a big uh, a big spend there. And um, mm-hmm. he's, I mean, he's a potentially difference maker. He's a fourth, fifth round pick the last couple of years. I mean, he's someone yep. that you just got to stay healthy. Um, you know, I think that uh, I, I like Eloy a lot, but it's just a matter of it's strictly on the health. And you're right. He is healthy now. And that's what matters. Um, the guy that I really wanted, and I think we probably talked about him in um, the preseason was uh, was Will Your Abreu in Boston. So it's, it's a tough spot. I really like the player a lot. Um, someone I drafted in both main events, I had to drop him just because he wasn't playing at all the first couple of weeks. Now he's playing a lot. However, Tyler O'Neill's out. Rafael Devers is out. Um, from listening to quotes from Alex Cora, I think Abreu is going to play um, every single day against righties. I think he's going to sit against a bunch of lefties. But I mean, this is someone that was, you know, what was he, 20, he had 24 home runs last year, 11 stolen bases. He was, he was, uh, he was 19 and 31 in 2022 in the minors. I just really like the player. He looks good. He's hitting the middle lineup right now. Um, strikes out a little too much, but he's walking a bunch. Uh, hard hit rate barrel has been pretty good. Um, well, hard hit is not great, but the barrel rate's over 10%. Um, four stolen bases already this year. He had, uh, he had two more RBIs today. Um, I like this lineup a little bit, especially when they get healthy, and I think he's going to play against righties. 
Um, just someone that I thought had some upside, whereas uh, there's not many guys with with upside this offense. I, I really like Abreu a lot. I got outbid on him in my Vegas main where I really wanted him. He went for 141 there. I thought I was pretty aggressive, and I didn't get it, but I did get him in the other one for 56, I think. We didn't get him. Uh, he went for 93 to 76, and I think we're like 59 is where we were at. So maybe I should have been a little bit more in on him. Uh, and I, I do agree with the sentiment he's going to play. Uh, as Siege points out, the Red Sox 40 man is just a disaster right now when it comes to hitters. They have so many injured guys or guys that are far away uh, that they they don't have really any hitters that they can add right now. But if Devers is back and then O'Neill comes back in short order from a concussion product from the concussion protocol, I don't know. I, it might not be as as long as I thought in terms of the run and playing time. But he had a really good week. Yeah. Abreu and- had a homer and three stolen bases. Uh, so yeah, he, he, he's starting to look a little bit more at ease at the major league level. And remember Abreu and Rafaela both are getting used to yeah. major league pitching and, and Rafaela played second three nights ago and shortstop the last two games. So maybe, uh, maybe if he can play enough defense there, maybe that sticks and opens up an outfield, uh, an outfield spot there. And, uh, but it's just, they got a lot of guys hurt. So I do know the the crunch is coming a little bit, but I do everything that Cora says, and it's been kind of the whole way, the whole way through, although it didn't work early on, but it really seems like yeah. they want him to play at least against righties yeah. and, um, I think that's pretty workable, and I just think that there's a uh, there's a legit like if you can squint a little bit, there's like a legit like twenty twenty upside. This guy, yeah, I agree. And not only that too, uh, that Raphael is probably going to get most of his time at shortstop because of story being out and because they they found like other options wanting. Uh, and it so, seems like when Grissom comes back, they do not want him to play shortstop. No, he's been playing second on his yeah. rehab assignment. Okay, there you go. I think yeah. they want him just to focus on that. Yeah. Uh, well, he started DH, and then then they were moving him to second. But they even had a quote saying they want him to get his reps at second base. So, yeah, that's where Grissom's going to probably play. Um, and, and right now, this Red Sox lineup's in a bad way, too. I mean, Valdez was hitting cleanup the other day. Um, yeah. It's pretty bad. It's uh, too bad because two weeks ago it looked really good, and then you got Story, Devers, and 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 O'Neill, and you're like, oh, it just got decimated. Absolutely, and now Cassis too. And now Cassis, then you got Whitlock on the IMA. Just they just get they're getting brutalized. Veta, Veta too. That's right. Yeah, it's just been yeah. The fact that they're hanging in there is pretty impressive so far. Yeah, it's because Tanner Houck is a is a hero. Great American hero, absolutely. Yeah. Um, other names on offense, uh, Tommy Pham. I think we talked about uh, a little bit last week, but uh, obviously signed with the White Sox, um, playing in uh, the minors right now. He was available about thirty five percent of main events. Um, Ahmed Mazzario in in Tampa, uh, taken in most main events, but thirty nine percent roster and twelve teamers. Second short and outfield eligible, and playing a ton with the injuries that uh, the Tampa's had. Um, playing really well too. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, I can see that. Um, see that as as as, as good options. Didn't really see him available in my leagues, but in, in the case of Rosario, that is, I saw Fam available in some places. Uh, most of my main, like my main, my fifteen teamers, Fam was, was uh, snagged last week, and obviously Rosario was long gone in those formats. Yeah, uh, Fam uh, was available in one of my mains. He got added for sixty-two. I was in on the bidding, but not quite that much. But I get it. He was sixteen home runs, twenty-two stolen bases a year ago. Like not that long ago, and he's going to play. I assume when he gets to the White Sox, they're going to play him every day. There's no reason not to. Yeah, that's right. Some other names. Uh, Jonathan, is it Jonathan? John, there's no H in his name, but Jonathan Classe. Yeah. Jonathan Classe in uh, Seattle got called up when Dominic Canzone went on the IL. Uh, Classe is a guy that uh, just steals a lot of bases. He's only 21. Um, I'm pretty sure that he's going to struggle hitting. He had big um, strikeout numbers in the minors. He was 28% last year in uh, in double A. But along with that 20, uh, 28% strikeout, he stole 62 bases last year. That is a massive number dude is legit fast he had another stolen base today he's got two of them uh, if he's playing every day at least until they get healthy um he's a he's a is a real legit stolen base at modicum of power too it's not like he's he's yeah. billy hamilton up there or anything like that yeah he had 20, uh, 20 home runs last year in the minors yeah so i got him in al towers that's the only place i got him uh but he's gonna play and i unless he goes victor scott on us that class a is gonna stick around for a while um you know, he could he could strike out 40% of the time and get sent down. That's still a plausible yeah. scenario too. But I did spend a decent amount of money in AL Tout Wars on him. And an AL only league, I think it's super important. Yeah, he's played five games and already has two steals. So I think it's not only is he fast and can steal, but I think when he gets on base, he's going to go. It's just a matter of yeah. him getting on base. Will probably be pretty tough against major league pitching. But, you know, we've seen it before with guys like this. You know, you can get hot for, hot for a couple of weeks where you're hitting, you know, even hitting 240, 250. 
um, he could steal, uh, you know, eight, 10 bags for you. That'd, that'd be huge. Yeah, it, it would be, uh, you know, and Hey, we stream, we can stream stolen bases. We can stream yeah. you know, other things. Why not? Uh, who else do you like this week? We got Colorado's got an interesting schedule this week. They have four games in cores and they play two games against the Astros in Mexico City. So kind of a really good setup for offense. I know they play two games next weekend, but Mexico City in the past has been just an offensive wonderland. Um, so, Sean uh, Bouchard, who got uh, who got a lot of attention in the main events in DCs and then got sent down, is is back up uh, with their injuries. Uh, Elleris Montero is playing a bunch. He was only thirty five percent roster in the main event. Do anything with Rockies or any other offensive players this week? I'm I brought I did pick up Bouchard in a couple of places, including like one it. league where he's surprisingly unop- unopposed. Like I think it was a 12 team, and we know 12s are weird. So yeah. Um, but at the same time, yeah, it, Bouchard was one of those that one of those Twitter cause celebrities, uh, you know, where like when he got sent down, everybody was mad at the Rockies. And yep. hey, I don't need much to kind of rip on the Rockies. So I was I jumped on board with that one there too. Uh so I picked up Bouchard this week and he, yeah, it's funny. I was I was the only thinking about the four games in cores. I kind of forgot. Yeah, we go to a, they're going to go to a planet that's even better than cores. Yep. Yep. Uh, and the, and the reason for that is that and and also um, the other reason why we're interested in Bouchard is Chris Bryant's on the IL. So yep. that that's playing time right there. Uh, it is. Yeah, he got called up when Bryant went the IL. So I like that one. I actually like Montero too. I like him a little bit. Uh, yeah. He, in the past, it hit the ball hard. I think you know you're never going to get a batting average from Montero, but you know, if you want to stream a guy for power this week and you're in a deeper league, a 15 team or uh, even probably taking an NL only, as I imagine, but a 15 teamer, he was available in most of them. 12 teamers available everywhere. If you need a, a power stream, I mean, he's at 40% hard hit rate. He was 44% hard hit rate last year. Yeah. Um, you could find worse guys to play for a week, too. He's dropped his strikeout rate a ton, small sample, but it, it's way down from where it was last year, too. It is. So, yeah, color me interested. You know who's been really, really good um, and available in mostly 12-teamers is Luis Garcia Jr. in um, in, in Washington. Uh, playing every day for uh, for the Nationals at second base. Uh, has been really, really good, hitting the ball hard. Um, he was someone that he's hitting, hitting the middle of the order for them right now. Uh, but you look at his hard contact, 50%, 14.6% barrel rate right now. And this is not a barrel guy. And it's only 62 plate appearances. But he seems like he's changed something. Striking out a little bit more. But I think you expect that with the, uh, the more hard contact. Uh, and has four stolen bases this year too. He only he only stole nine last year, but uh, Garcia's been hitting the ball really well. And the, the post 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 hype sleeper. Yeah, I was gonna say way down the line sleeper. Yeah, uh, yeah. He, he, the Nats are playing, but they're they're not special bad right now. They're just merely, and they might not even be bad. I don't think they're good, but they had a pretty good week Do- against the Dodgers and Astros, no less. Uh, they did. They played the Dodgers. They played the Dodgers really well. It was very strong. two out of three against the Dodgers, and then I think two out of three against the Astros. Right? Uh, that, that's a good week. That is a that is a really good week. Is Kyle Finnegan leading the league in saves? I think so. Again, if he's not, he's if while. he's not, he's really close. Right? Yep. I, I actually parted ways with Hunter Harvey in the league uh, or two this week because, as well as Harvey's pitching, he's clearly not the guy, and I need the spot. I was uh, I was one off. He has seven. Clay Holmes actually has eight, so he just uh, just yeah. top of him. Um, yeah, Kyle Finnegan's walking thirteen percent of guys right now. His FIP is five nine one. His BABIP's one seventy four. <laughs> like this is just, this is like he is dancing through so many raindrops right now. It's wild. Yep. Yeah, and that's the thing is I know I know it's bad form to cut Harvey. I just I actually don't think it is because I think Finnegan's leash is really long right now. Yeah, I think so too. Um, like even if it blows a couple, like he's just, I think he's put enough goodwill in these first three and a half weeks. And I think his leash got long enough where I don't think I can hold the backup right now. And I loved Hunter Harvey in draft season. I thought he would be getting the job fairly quickly and it's uh, not transpiring that way so far. I think it'll happen at some point, but I don't think he, I think he's a drop too. Yeah. Uh, okay, good. I feel better about that now. Uh, where are there any catchers you do like? There's a lot of people. I, I noted in my one league there was nobody there, but uh, you know, a lot of people are looking for replacements for Francisco Alvarez, whether you're being a 12 teamer, two catchers, one catchers. Any catchers you really like? Uh, Connor Wong is available in some leagues. I kind of like Miguel Amaya in Chicago, kind of taking time from time from Jan Gomes. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if Danny Jansen was available in your league, I think that's probably the easiest ad. He just, he right. just came or back. Or Herrera was, in St. Louis or something like that. Yeah. We've talked about that before, but even he has caught the Cardinals bug lately. So. He has. Um, um, there's not a lot there, but is there anybody? No. Connor Wong's playing pretty well right now. He'd probably be the one that like had some availability that I'd probably grab. Yeah, I don't play in any one catcher leagues, so I think Wong was pretty much taken. I wasn't looking yeah. for any uh, uh, catchers either. So 
that's that's a, that's a good feeling. I promise you, from the last uh, from my afternoon, that looking for catchers is not fun. Oh, I don't don't doubt it for a second. I've been there before, just not. Yeah, this week. Danny Jansen went for sixty seven. My he was available in one of my mains. I was like, oh, nobody picked, or he got dropped last week. So I'm like, oh, I can. You can slide him through for 25 or 30. Yeah, not even close. It was uh, there's no sliding through. That's one I thing was, I've noticed. Yeah, not, not, not early. Uh, and not, I, I and definitely, not 15, definitely not in definitely not in 15 teamers. There's just nobody sliding through. Because nobody's given up yet. Nobody is yeah. like beaten down, like, oh, we're the I'm the Marlins of this league. No, not, nobody's like that yet. Just to just to prove your point, there were and I'm just looking at one of my main events, there were 15 guys for $20 or more added. Every single one of those had a backup bid. So there's nobody mm. sliding through anybody. You're right. Brutal. Yeah. Um, anybody else that you liked on offense? Uh, you know, Davis Schneider's been playing a bunch in Toronto, had a home run today. Abraham Toro's leading off for the A's, but he's still Abraham Toro. Um, <laughs> anybody else offensive wise you find yourself looking at before we jump into pitching? Well, we picked up Tyler Freeman. Um and yep. I like was... the I like the third base outfield eligibility on him. Yeah, too. and that's the thing is like currently we have Jordan Westbrook at corner and we've got Jonathan India at second base. If India's illness keeps him out anymore, yeah. we'll have to slide Westbrook to second base. So we needed someone corner or second base eligible, or we were just going to deal with it for like what, four days. Uh, what round do you guys get Westbrook? Do you remember? Uh, I'm pulling it up right now. As a matter of fact, has to be days. one of the, uh, one of the better uh, April uh, values so far. He's at uh He's was he 333 with five homers and three stolen bases. Uh, I don't know if you've looked at you own him, so you probably haven't looked at him very much because you don't need to because you have him. 60% hard hit rate so far. He is massive. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty darn good. 23rd round. Good. Yeah. That is such a great pick. And we talked about him, oh. and I I mean it was it's just a smart, really good pick. And that is I like when those work out really well. I mean, it's it's really good right there. It was in 23rd round. I, I got that wrong. Hold on. I was looking at the wrong league. I, I got to know this now. Now that you asked me, it's like, yeah. it's bugging me. So bear with me for a sec. This is great podcasting right now. Uh, no, I got, I, I, I reached for Westbrook. Got him at eight, the last pick of the 18th round. Uh, all my, all my comments go away, Jeff. That's uh, the no value anymore. No, it's, it, it makes it even better. <laughs> I had the gift of prophecy, apparently. Um, I think that, that was one a, of the earlier picks on him. And then I got just, Kowser at 26, 15 also. So those you two guys, guys, you guys, you guys held him, right? Yep, of course. Yeah. And that is that is beautiful. I mean, Westbrook's got 18 RBI. He's got 14 runs scored. Like I said, the, the five homers and three steals and hit 333. I mean, it's and most importantly, with someone like him with the big Aprils, like his playing time is set now. Like he's the leash is huge, the leash is long. If he had started slow, who knows what happens there? They get some, you know, some years of veterans in there with Urias or Mateo, whatever it may be. But now that he's played well, like you just you just run now. It's beautiful. Yeah. We weren't the men on Westbrook. Someone picked him at pick 221. That's oh, wow. so 15th really round. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, but yeah, I, the thing is he had a good spring. So we're kind of looking at that and, and yeah, uh, it, it was one of those where like, Oh yeah. And he fit the, the second and third eligibility is a beautiful thing. It is beautiful. Yeah. It covers a lot of stuff there. Some of the chat was asking about, uh, we like Mauricio Dobon as a pickup. He's playing a bunch for the Astros. Mm -hmm. um, he's always just kind of a guy to me. Like it's just, there's not, there's not a lot of power. There's not a lot of speed. I always find it hard. Um, you know, if you need some batting average, he hit 278 last year, really solid there. But um, he's someone that has to have the batting average because he just doesn't, he doesn't run or really have much pop. Yeah. Uh, I always yeah, thought I, he, I always thought he'd run more than he does. He just doesn't like he had seven seals. That was a career high. Yeah. And dusty lets his players run too. So it wasn't a, it wasn't a manager issue. No, it was. Yeah. With the new rules, he scores, he stole seven. So maybe, but you know, no hard contact. Um, I just, I'm never much of a Dubon guy. I think that if you need batting average, he's, a, he's an okay fill in a deeper league, but that's kind of the extent of it. Yep. Let's talk, uh, let's talk pitching fab, but first to know from our sponsors at Vivid Seats, finally baseball's back. This MLB season, knock it out of the park with Vivid Seats and score great tickets to the biggest games of the year. Every fastball, every home run, and every eye-popping play of your favorite team, live and in person. Plus, the Vivid Seats rewards, you earn rewards with every single purchase. Just buy 10 tickets, then cash in your credit towards your free 11th ticket. Talk about an easy win. Here's a pro reward tip. When buying tickets for your whole group, split the bill and make progress towards your free 11th ticket even faster. From behind the dugout to the upper deck, Vivid Seats has great tickets for all the 2024 games that matter to you. Visit VividSeats.com or download the app. Vivid Seats, experience it live. See VividSeats.com slash rewards for all terms and conditions. So, Jeff, I want to talk about some struggling hitters, so we'll do pitchers fairly quickly here. There's not a lot of them there. Uh, what were you doing with starting pitchers this week? Uh, did you, were you an Albert Suarez guy in Baltimore, the yes. uh, the, 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 the mid-30s pitcher who uh, has looked really good, looked really good in spring too? Um, as, uh, My top as we, guy. I was going to say, as we've talked about before, 
um, last couple weeks. I, I found starting pitching really difficult again this week. Yeah. Although even with Suarez, like I'm excited about him. Uh, yeah, I like the lack of walks. That was a beautiful thing in his first start. Uh, but it looks like there's a possibility he only gets one start, not two. They might skip him to get great and let that. I think that would allow Grayson to go twice this week in part because John means is coming back the su yeah. subsequent week. Now, if Suarez deals tomorrow, which I think it's tomorrow, um, it then I, I, then maybe the Orioles will feel compelled to give him that second start or, or find another way to keep him in the rotation. I think that's among the range of outcomes here. Uh, and given, I mean, they got a good outing out of Cole Irvin today. So that kind of pumps the brakes on replacing him. But you know, you look at it, it's like, okay, there's Suarez against the angels. I wish it was a home instead of at Anaheim, but still I like it. Yeah. Dean Kramer hasn't been very good. Although he was better in his most recent start. I no, I don't actually, I don't think Kramer was that good. I don't, I don't know. I don't have him. I was, I was avoiding him, but uh, there's a, there's a pathway there for Suarez to stay in the rotation for a while. Bradish is kind of getting knocked around in his spring train in his uh, minor league rehab assignment. I think they can, it'll give them a little bit more time on Bradish. So they can buy some time. So yeah, I, I was big on Suarez. I got him in AL tout. I got him in a couple other places as well in the NFBC environment, not in the main, cause we never get the big names in the main, but um uh, yeah, we, we we have been bidding on him. How much did he go for in your main? He went for it was like kind of in the twenties in mine. It looked like. Let us see. Uh, he went. F Albert Suarez in my main event went for thirty nine. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, he went for twenty five and twenty three in mine. I. It's I about right. It's it, it's interesting because I kind of liked it too. But like this start tomorrow, like you mentioned, this start is huge. Like if he is not great. He might be done before we get to really pitch him, but if he's really good, then he gets a second start this weekend against Oakland. Like that would be really nice. Um, so it's, it's all kind of a guess. A lot of it's John Means, a lot of it's Kyle Bradish, but uh, I like I like Suarez too. I mean, I know it's a weird story. He he pitched overseas. He's thirty four. Yeah. Like uh, it's in he's in pitching in he was pitching for the Rays uh, rookie ball in two thousand eight. Like this is a, that was sixteen years ago. So I mean, we're we're talking someone who started was eighteen, finally kind of making it. Uh, it's a fun story. Uh, I'm rooting for him. He's looked really good. I, I liked him too. He's my top pitcher. I don't think I got him any anywhere. Maybe in uh, I think I'm in uh, in yogurt. Your favorite. Um, but um, I like it. It's just this starts really big. Yeah, uh, it is. It is indeed. Uh, but I, I kept on getting you know beat out on him in a lot of the uh, NFPC environments. I was in on him everywhere, but it just didn't seem to get him. It seemed like, which is really weird. I got him in. Uh, I got him in scarf. I actually, <laughs> I. I I was more, I have a, a, just a yawning, gaping need for starting pitching in Scarf. So I, pay, I bid 103 for him there. Second place was 37. I, I bet it was a league where I had like 950 left. I was sick and tired of getting out bids. So I went a little extra. Uh, probably not the most disciplined approach, but I did get Suarez there. Uh, the guy that I like is uh, is Jake Irvin in Washington, but he just keeps facing the Dodgers. It just every time I look, it's like, oh, facing the Dodgers. But he's got 20% uh, strikeout rate, 7% walk rate so far in 23 innings. Um, I looked at him as a sit the first uh, first week you have him, and then you pitch him next week, uh, two step at Miami and home Toronto. I thought was uh, was was not too bad. Um, but I mean, yeah, that's that's kind of what we're doing here. I mean, I, I liked Keaton Wynn in a 12 teamer for the, the Giants pitcher. He was about. 53%, 53% rostered there. He has two starts this week. So I thought that uh, Keaton wins an interesting arm. He's uh, against the Mets and the Pirates this week. I do like that as a two-step. But it was uh, tough to find guys. And we talked about Jack Leiter if you wanted to stash him. Um, you have Tyler yeah. Alexander in Tampa's pitching okay. But, you know, I, was, I, I added him in one spot. It's kind of down my down my waterfall. I got to say it before you did. Um, what about uh, what about Ben Lively in, in Cleveland? Uh, I looked at him, and then I realized he's facing Boston and at Atlanta this week, and I was like, oh, that's kind of scary. But remember, it's Boston missing four starters. Although they might, if, if both O'Neal and Devers are back on Tuesday, that changes a little bit at least. Well, yeah, that's true. But it's still, uh, at, it's still at Atlanta Sunday, too. Yeah. I had a John he's, Gray he's in a 12, well. but uh, as far as the 15s go, it was, it was just very tough sledding this week uh, to yeah. find pitchers that I liked. Someone in the chat mentioned Ryan Weathers. I would have got him for sure. He was taken in all my leagues. He's been yeah, he's been for rostered sure. for a few weeks in 15ers. But uh, what about uh, what about relievers, Jeff? We had some movement in the uh, in the relieving world in a couple of teams, uh, both the Cubs and the Brewers. Um, I think everybody was surprised to see Abner Uribe pitching like the fourth inning of the game this week, and it looks like. Uh, <laughs> and then McGill came in, couldn't get a two inning save. Piamps has three saves now, uh, and then we got the Cubs. Uh, they said uh, Craig Council said after the game. Uh, after his fourth blown save already this year, that Adbert Azale is no longer the closer, at least for right now. 
um, Hector Norris in the mix, uh, Mark Leiter in the mix. We talked about how uh, there was a second Leiter added. Uh, did you ending with these uh, with these bullpens? How are your bullpens so far? Do you need closers? I always need closers, Scott. Always. Uh, we all do. Uh, yeah. I mean, who doesn't? Uh, Jordan Romano, two saves this weekend back. It was was huge. That I agree. Main event. You and I both were sharing that love. That's for I want to. Sure. I want to give you some props. You said you when we were talking last week. You're like, I'm definitely starting Romano this week. And I looked at it closer when I started him too. And I would. Uh, I would be very disappointed if I had not started him, even though he was not activated Monday. He was activated Tuesday and had two saves this week. Yeah, Norris went for 131 in my main, for what it's worth. Um, so I didn't get him there. I got him in Scarf because uh, I was I was a buyer in Scarf this week. Very aggressive buyer. Last week, I got nothing and liked it, like zero, zero players last week. And I think that's happened to me twice out of like five weeks. Not good. Not good at all. And in another league, I got outbid on Norris in a, in a 12. I did add Mark Leiter Jr., who has actually been the better pitcher of the two. Like Norris is like a yeah. one seven whip right now. He's not but, been good. Yeah. He was really good last year, but he's not been good so far this year. I still think Norris is the the first guy on the list. He I I prioritized him over Lighter, although I Lighter I admit has pitched better. Yeah. So I but yeah I I I was in on a yeah I do think that there's long term possibilities for Chicago here if one of them takes the the ball and runs with it. Uh, but it could it could be Ben Brown too, for all we know. Like they could. Uh, one, I would I would love that. They took him out of the rotation. He's he's pitching out of the pen now, which I would have kept him in the rotation and and sent Kyle Hendricks somewhere else. But yeah, uh, they stuck with Hendricks. I would love if Brown was closing games. I think that'd be nice. That's not going to last much longer. They can't keep doing that. They're right. they're they contending right? team. They can't just keep living yeah. with that. Agreed. Um, it, it's I love Kyle Hendricks, but I, I think it, we're at the end of the line here. So I sent you a text message after I sent you today's outline saying that I missed somebody. And that was, uh, I want to go back real quick because I missed him again. Uh, yep. Mitchell Parker with, uh, with Washington Parker. Yep. Uh, pitched really well this week and against the, uh, against uh, the Astros today, shut them down and looked good against the Dodgers early in the week too. I was like, I, I like the, the, the crazy thing of that game. He was facing glass now on Tuesday. The mm-hmm. Dodgers are minus three ninety in that game, which you never see in baseball games. The Nationals won the game too. I was like, I had to look and I'm like, Oh, glass now facing someone named Mitchell Parker. I didn't know it was at the time. Uh, Looked really good today. He had eight strikeouts, three hits, uh, no walks against the Astros, no runs given up. Um, this is someone that in 2023 in double A had a 4 2 ERA, 1 3 5 whip. He just walked too many guys, but um, has already struck out a lot of guys. You look at his K numbers in the minors, have been really, really good. I watched him today a little bit. He throws like a, it's like a kind of in between a cutter and a slider. It's probably listed as a slider, but looked really good. It was really busting righties kind of down and in with that pitch. Um, he looked really good. I uh, I upped my bids for him. He was one that got uh, some of the chat mentioned the Sunday tax. He got he got the Sunday tax big time this week. He went for eighty seven in one of my main events. Like he was popular. Yeah, uh, didn't get him. He was a waterfall guy for me, and maybe I should have been. You know, I mean that's that's pretty good. He went twenty nine in one of my mains. Steve Go- Stephen Goodwin, uh, team two next to us, guy sat next to us in the draft. Um, so good player. He was in on him. I think I know he plays a multiple uh, NFC big money events, so he knows what he's doing out there. Uh, yeah. I, I wish I would have uh, had, I, I wish I would have kind of maybe gone in a little bit higher on them. Yeah. I, uh, I upped my bids and I still did not get him, but uh, I, uh, for I watched him, I actually thought it was not a smoke and mirrors kind of guy when I watched him. I thought he looked, uh, I thought he looked pretty good. Someone asked Jack Mitchell Parker or Mackenzie Gore. I would still go Mackenzie Gore. Um, I still, uh, I still like the stuff there with with Gore. But, um, so Jeff, let's talk about some slow starting hitters. We've kind of hit on a couple as we've gone through here. I just want to end with a couple of guys. It seems to mm-hmm. me, and it might just be recently biased me remembering, but it seems like there's a lot more big names. A full like almost month in the season, we're hitting under two hundred. Like, we got a lot of guys in baseball hitting under two hundred. Like yeah. look at the White Sox, like three of their top five guys are hitting under two hundred. But uh, first guy I want to ask you about is someone that was uh, like a third rounder. Um, and kind of one of those guys you felt like was really solid. It's Randy Arozarena in Tampa. Um, he has been hit. He's in one sixty five right now. He has two home runs. Does have four stolen bases. You know, kind of why you have him is the speed power combo. But one sixty five uh, barrel rates down, hard hit rates down, strikeout rates uh, is up. He's kind of had dropped that strikeout rate the last couple of years up a little bit to twenty seven percent, walking less. Um, I think the answer in most of these is like you just got to start him. You're not worried, but you're are you worried at all about a Rosarena so far? No, I think I only have him in one league, and I'm not doing anything about it. I'm just leaving him. Leaving him. Yeah, I mean you kind of have to. Um, uh, but yeah, 165 is it's it's brutal. I mean, that, we're through 86 plate appearances. And I know you have slumps during the year, but man, they get they get so much so much more harder to deal when they start the year out. 
I mean, the only thing that is, with any of these like mega slow slump, uh, mega slow starters, I was going to say slow slumpers, but that's that's uh, those are in, in con- conflicting terms. Yeah, uh, is like if they're hiding an injury. That's yeah. the thing that would that would bother me. But I know mine, like, is, mine is if I see like a huge change in their strikeout rate or something. He's up a little bit, but you scroll over and you look into his BABIP is two hundred four right now, and that makes yeah. me think that I think we're going to be just fine with the Rosarena. Yeah, maybe. And then you look at like, you know, you check, you want to check like the stat cast stuff. Is he like hitting it a lot softer or something like to, to do with that? Yeah. You know, Todd Zola and I were talking about on Sirius XM today, which was also referring to Jason Collette's excellent article and collect calls on, you can see on Rotowire, which you can check out for yourself. Rotowire.com slash pod, get a free peek behind our paywall. Uh, Jason wrote about this, how for the batted ball events aren't producing the averages and power numbers that we'd expect. Um, hmm. And so like barrels aren't going as far. Uh, they are, you know, you're not getting the home runs you should from the, the, the exit velocities that are being produced. So it's interesting. Like what's happening with the ball. That's I mean, my first question, but yeah, if you're having the exact same, you know, launch angle and degree and all that kind of stuff and, and velocity and it's not going as far. That's obviously a, a ball thing at the moment, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, so someone that uh, I think with the Rosarena, I, I once, once I looked at the Babbitt, I kind of was like, yeah, he's going to be fine. But someone who uh, was not as nearly as popular, but uh, was a huge prospect last year is Jordan Walker in St. Louis. One of many Cardinals that's struggling uh, Walker's at 164, no home runs, no steals. Uh, Bell rate's actually pretty good, 12.5%, but he's striking out a bunch, 27%. He was 22.5% last year. Um, you know, did hit 276 last year. I think he was kind of considered a bust last year, but there was some good stuff when he came back up. Uh, do you think Walker's up for good? Do you think there's a chance they send him back to AAA? What do you think we do uh, We do with Walker here? Uh, again, you know, I want to preach patience. I think that's the right play. This is a harder, uh, a much harder one though than a Rosarena. It is, especially because yeah. the Cardinals, we, the malaise that we talked about earlier about the team as a whole. Um, he's young enough with options to be the scapegoat, you know. But then again, the question is, okay, who are they going to slot in and in place of Jordan Walker? And that that's kind of been their problem. Yeah, I mean, if I'm them, I just let him go a little bit longer. I don't think three and a half weeks is a long enough leash, but. Um, you got to start to worry a little bit if you if you if you have him. Do you do you bench him? Do you keep playing him if you're in a 15 team, or do you find somebody else to play him and just kind of let him chill for a little bit? How would you handle that? I'm probably playing him. Um, I might need to see like if like I, I think maybe in a 12 I could find a pivot, but I hate trying to time the market, Scott. I think yeah, it's, it's a fair point. But then uh, again, Walker doesn't have the track record yet at the big league level that that maybe merits the patience that I want to give them. You know, I, I think it's, it's a fair concern. Um, just like it's a, you know, a fair concern about some of these other young players that are starting slowly. I think I'm a, I'm a hold on Walker, but I think I'm a trying to find a way to bench him and I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and time it. You can go up series by series. Yeah. I'd like to see something. I mean, no home runs and no steals is really tough. Um, a couple of people made in the chat mentioned the cold. I think that that impacts the, the ball flight too. So that could be, that's a fair point too. As it get warmer, maybe we see some more of that, but yeah, that so, doesn't affect a Rosarena, but no, well, yeah, unless he's playing on the road, I suppose. But yeah. um, Jordan Walker's teammate, if we're going to talk about someone that uh, there are some things that look different, if you look at the stat cast and all that, Paul Goldschmidt um, hitting 173 with one home run, uh, hard hit rate last year was 51%, right now 31%. Barrel rate mm-hmm. last year was 12%, right now 2%. Strikeout rate was 23% last year, now it's 28.5%. Um, he's slugging 213 right now. OEP is 279. Is there enough here that uh, at this point of the season that you are worried about Goldschmidt? Because I think at age 36, uh, I start to worry about Goldie at this point. Yeah. Uh, I think there's a chance he goes second half of Breu at some point. Um, he might be like a year behind Jose Abreu in, in terms of the slump early, get it figured out sort of thing. But he did. He was declining last year, too. Uh, Goldie was uh, it's interesting because Goldie actually went through a decline phase before he had like his big yep. seasons in St. Louis though, too. And you're, you're kind of like, Ooh, Ooh, okay. This is why Arizona was willing to let him go, you know? And so it's possible still that, uh, you know, this is, that was, you know, that was his, like, I'm not trying to think of the right phrase for this here. Uh, I wouldn't say it was like a last kick per se, but you know, it, 
that we've seen this sort of decline before. So this this one might be more for real this time. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, I'd be worried. I just think there's enough there that like we talked about with Rosarina, like not much has changed except for the Babbitt, but a few things here and there, like a little percentages. Um, Goldie has looked lost. He's looked bad. He's looked yeah. slow. He's looked a little old right now. It's just you know, everything is the wrong direction. Swing strike rates at 12.2%. He's never been a love above 11% since this rookie year in Arizona. So, I mean, there's enough here. I mean, if you draft a Goldschmidt, you got to keep playing him. I don't think you can do anything with him yet, but he's one that, uh, I would keep watching those numbers and I would, uh, I, I I'm worried on Goldschmidt. Whereas the, the ones we talked about before, I'm not really that worried with a, someone like a Rosarena, like someone like Aaron judge. I'm not even worried about it a little bit. I know he's under 200 also, but, um, Goldie's the one of like the top 10 round guys that I'd be, I'd be really concerned about. Yeah. I, I get you on that one there. Yeah. I, 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 I think at least, you know, he'll keep playing. Whereas, you know, yes. Jordan Walker might not. I mean, I think Walker sat a game against uh, Oakland earlier this week. Uh, I guess he sat today too. So yeah, he sat I don't have, obviously I don't have Walker, so I'm not as acutely attuned into this. That's two sits in one week. Yeah. Okay. Frustrating now, in a 15 team where I still have to hold him. I still don't yeah, think I can cut him hold, quite yet, well, but I'm, cut. Yeah. I think I'm finding a way to, I'm finding a way to bench him and, and chill for a week or so and see what the Cardinals do. Cause you're, I mean, there's a, a comment in the chat that he's not playing. Like that's the problem. If he's not playing. Then, then, you know, they're maybe they're losing confidence in him at the same time. Yeah. Maybe not cut, but definitely bench, uh, yeah. in a 12 and, and you could even bench in a 15. I wouldn't argue with you too much on that. We talked about the, uh, the Astros a little bit earlier and how much they are struggling and kind of at the, at the center of that is, uh, is Alex Bregman, their, their third baseman, uh, hitting 225, so a little bit higher than the guys we talked about before, but zero home runs, one stolen base, three runs scored on the year somehow. He's played 19 games, scored three runs. Like, that just kills you right there. It's like runs is this one stat we don't always look at when we're looking at guys, but three runs is brutal. Um, OBP's down 50 points from his uh, from his norm. Usually he's about a 360s guy. Um, he's never one who has a hard hit rate that you, you jump at anyway, and it's just kind of in the same line. Bail rate's 3.2%. Um, maybe he's just not getting those Crawford box home runs or something, but uh, it's been a really rough uh, first month for Bregman. Contract year theory is not working out for him at all. Either. Oh, that's right. You're right. He's going for contract. Oof. Yeah. Uh, and it's just a reminder that not everybody does responds that way. It's not just a matter of turning on the switch. You know, we all, and that, that's the thing I kind of hated about contract years. Talk about that is like people assume that, Oh, it's playoff Jimmy. It's, you know, it's contract year Alex. Well, <laughs> It might not be the case. It's, you know, baseball's hard as it turns out, and you can't just turn it on and off. I remember the uh, the Marcus Simeon contract year and just how oh, bad yeah. you could just like visually, you could like see him pressing at the plate. And just one of the, some guys react to it differently. And mm-hmm. he's been obviously awesome since then, since the A's offered him whatever that $200,000 over 40 years contract, whatever it was. Um, yeah. But I mean, he, he's what you see. There's some guys that just, and I think, yeah, it's paid over however many years, but there's some guys who, don't deal with that. You could like see him. You could see when he, that first, the first couple of weeks he was struggling. It was the COVID year too. So he knew like, I only got 40 games left to get my contract. You could just tell it, mm-hmm. it wears on guys, but um, yeah, it's a good point with Bregman. He is not doing himself many years, but he uh, not looked good so far. Another infielder who's not looked good. Uh, Glaber Torres in New York. I think he's someone that like, as you're drafting, you get to the spot where you're like, oh, I'll just take Glaber Torres. He's safe. He's easy. He's fine. He'll hit 25 home runs, hit 265. We'll call it a day. Um, no home runs so far, hitting a buck ninety-five. Uh, he has two RBI on the year, which is crazy number considering he's played twenty-one games. Like we talk about the Bregman's runs killing you. If you drafted Torres, he has two RBIs. That just that kills you too. Um, he's another one, kind of like uh, Goldschmidt, that looks a lot different at the plate right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, hard hit rates down eight percent, barrel rates down four percent. His strikeout rate is up eleven percent. He dropped it to fourteen percent last year. He was kind of a low twenties guy, then down to fourteen percent last year. Dropped it really nicely. Back up to twenty five percent swing strike rates back up a little bit. Um, are you concerned about uh, are you concerned about Glaber at all in here? Yeah, not really. Um, I think, in fact, I try to trade for him right now. I mean, I think that lineup's so good. Um, yeah. I know Judge is slumping right now. Got booed on uh, Saturday. I think. By the way, that's that's a whatever. That's truly absurd. Boo Stanton yeah. if you want. You can't boo Judge. Yeah. Well. Yeah. We, we, I, I know, I, I know, I know something, something New York fans. Um, right. still but, it's judge. Like he's your captain. He's like, come on, stop. Yeah. I, I, I'm a hundred percent with you on that. And you know that, um, the, the threat that I don't think Torres is ever a threat to lose his job. He might be a threat to get moved down in the order. I think yeah. that's the thing that's kind of like a, a, a real possibility. 
it's crazy he has two RBI though, like on that team. That yeah. seems impossible. But uh, I kind of lean with you too, although I is it someone to monitor a little bit. Not quite as worried as I am with Goldschmidt, but you know that you see some of the stuff, uh, some of the stat cast numbers and the strikeout rate, uh, you know, kind of vary that much. You worry a little bit, but that's one that you know in, in a week or two you want to check that and see if it's kind of uh, coming back down to the norm or if it's still kind of at these at these new levels. But uh, last couple guys I want to ask you about are on the same team. Uh, same team being the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, Cabrian Hayes was a monster in spring training. He was hitting, hitting, mm -hmm. hitting the ball hard, hitting the home runs. Uh, season started and uh, that has, that has fully gone away. Uh, he has uh, he has no home runs so far. He has no stolen bases. Uh, he's hitting two sixty four, so he's not killing you there. But uh, just kind of wild that he was going crazy in the spring, and it's just kind of all going. His barrel rate's under two percent. Um, not really hitting as uh, not really hitting it hard like he was in spring training. Right. Well, it's almost like he's facing better pitchers in the regular yeah, season. That, that might be a factor too. It's uh, he's walking a lot. He's not striking out. So I'm, you know, bad. fine. Obviously the average is fine. It's just weird. He's not hitting for any pop. And I guess, he, but it's weird. His OBP is 380. So he's getting on base, but he's not running at all. He's gone 20 stolen bases in 2022, 10 last year, and now zero so far this year. I kind of feel like uh, we wanted to find reasons to believe in him. Yeah. And, and it's funny because we talked about how we thought the steals weren't going to be there, but the power was going to come back up a little bit from the 15, maybe in the low twenties. And uh, ne neither one's happened. So we're kind of right in the speed, but wrong on the power so far. I kind of resisted until late. And then I added him, I think in a uh, 12 teamer, or maybe I have it in scarf too. Uh, but because that, that scarf team is really bad. Uh, he but, was a, he was a big time FOMO guy for me. I wanted to get him and he just kept going up higher and higher yeah. and I never ended up getting him. And so far so good, I guess. I think he's going to be fine, but uh, it's just yeah. been weird how the, the power's just been lost. And that's maybe it's a cold weather thing in Pittsburgh too. That doesn't help there. That could be part of it too. Yeah. Uh, and, and again, it, today's what April 21st. Yeah. We got a lot sure. of time before these players can start yeah. turning around. Uh, but yeah, you're right. I, I think we kind of like, we found indicate, you know, he had, he showed some indicators and then I think we amplified them because we like him. you know, I think that's, uh, I think that's fair. Uh, Jeff, do you know who hit eighth for the pirates today? Yes, I do. I, cause I told you to add him to the outline. O'Neill Cruz. I, I set you up too easily there. Yeah. And their MLB.com had a, we're still believing in O'Neill Cruz article today. So I, it kind of shows you where he's at. He is at 240. I guess he's 209 after today's games, uh, three mm -hmm. home runs, two stolen bases, uh, the issue here is the is the strikeouts have been just mammoth. He's at 41%, 40.5% strikeout rate uh, right now. He only had one strikeout today, so his strikeout rate actually went down with only one strikeout. Um, we It's funny because we talked about him. We talked about Ellie. We talked about C.J. Abrams, kind of these guys that – Abrams doesn't have the strikeout issues much, but, you know, these these young, toolsy guys, and everybody's like, oh, I told you Ellie and C.J. Abrams would be great. Uh, they have been, but it's, uh, you know, O'Neill Cruz is 41% strikeout rate has really struggled. Uh, where do you think this goes? Do you think we're looking at, uh, you know, he's missed a year and he's kind of rusty and coming back or, uh, where do you feel about O'Neill Cruz kind of going forward here? He missed a year was rusty and it, it coming back and he was unfinished to begin with, you know, yeah. he wasn't great in his rookie year, especially he had a very similar Ellie esque finish to his rookie season. Uh, and he wasn't off to a tremendous start in those nine games that he played last year. He's an unfinished player. It might come back. We don't, I don't, I just don't know when it's going to come back. Um, and I think that's the tricky thing. And, and to what extent it may not be till 2025. Hit eighth is not great. No, it's not, but it, it, it's funny. You know, how many times do we get the, you know, why draft Ellie here when you can get O'Neill, uh, four rounds later. And well, that's why. He doesn't have 50% hard hit, right? He's hitting the ball really hard when he does hit it. It's just that 40% strikeout rate. I mean, that mm -hmm. you can have big strikeout rates. 40% is one that's just going to, it's going to kill you. It's going to make your average. It's going to be so bad. It's just, you, you got to get that down. You look at Ellie, Ellie's down from 34% to 31%. But the interesting thing with Ellie is he's walking right now. He's at 13.5% walk rate. Um, <laughs> got to like that as a step right there. Yeah, he had a great week. And in part, he's walking more because the Reds lineup around him is not as strong as it we expected it to be. And then they yeah. took out like Encarnacion strand missed a couple of days to illness. He returned uh, this weekend though, and finally had a big double today, but uh, hasn't been that guy that we are hoping for so far. India went through a massive slump and then was out of the lineup the last couple of days because of an illness. I mean, uh, you're going to walk, you're going to walk the guy that can hurt you. Ellie is the yeah. guy that can hurt you. So, although he can hurt you on the base pass too, as the angels found out when he, Stole a base, stole third, and then scored on the throwing year. So that's still 
Like he can hurt you that way too, which is the best thing. But Ellie walked four times on Saturday. That was fun. Yeah, he has an 18% barrel rate right now. Um, like I said, the strikeouts are down a little bit. I mean, his the 290, I think, is, is uh, not going to stick. The Babbitt's really mm-hmm. high, and he's still striking out a lot. But uh, six home runs, 10 stolen bases. I mean, he he looks like he could be a, a 50 stolen base guy and kind of with some ease. It's it's crazy to say, but if he stays healthy, you got to think 50 is the floor right Dude, now. Dude, his, his stride is so beautiful. I love he's it. He's so freaking fast. It's wild. It it's like four steps in the second base. It's like, I don't know how you ever catch him. It's just uh, – he is uh, – amazingly fun to watch it is it is very nice you have him on your favorite team yes uh, it is it is it's fun to have that player it does not happen very often and when it happens it uh, it's very very enjoyable indeed anybody else uh you want to talk about anything else on your mind anything else you got uh, got going on you want to discuss no i think i'm good i think so too i think we kind of hit everybody a lot of uh a lot of interesting talk about some of the slow starters and a lot of fab this week i think the fab offense we're going to have a couple of guys this week that uh, we're bid on that are going to be uh, impact guys, which you haven't had much of. This is the first time that uh, in a couple of weeks that I thought uh, there was some offense to bid on. So want to thank everybody for listening to the Red Wire Fantasy Baseball Podcast. Obviously, we didn't get to every offensive slow star. I saw some comments in the chat about some other names. Um, you know, we just uh, couldn't get to everybody. There's a lot of offensive we slow We can't starters. go for it's 10 great. hours here. You know, that's yeah, there's, <laughs> all I got to do is all I got to do is open up my roster and I, we, can, we can start right there. But I yep. um, want to thank everybody for listening. Always, uh, always fun. Always enjoyable. Talk some baseball with everybody. Um, if you uh, if you want to hit us up on Twitter, Jeff is at, at Jeff underscore Erickson. I am at Scott Jenstead. By the way, thanks to Kevin Hastings for the nice comment about uh, the stuff, the Schwab post I had earlier this week from uh, yeah, um, that was uh, it was really sad news. I was I was on that show. People didn't know. And uh, Howie Schwab was really just a really nice, cool guy. So yes, I've heard really, that from every single person that's met him too. Wild that uh, that it was him and Stuart Scott, and both of us are no longer with us. It's really really sad on that. But uh, they're, yeah. they were both great to great to uh, great to hang out with for a couple of days. That I was in, it was in New York for that. So uh, thanks for Kevin to that comment. Uh, other than that, if you want to hit us up, do that. Uh, we'll be back at you next Sunday. I want to thank Prize Picks for the sponsorship again. The code for Prize Picks is Rotopod. That's R O T O P O D for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. Other than that, back at you next Sunday. Hopefully everybody has a good fantasy week and take care.